and Frankenstein by Alan Rune Peterson, a scientific experiment. The long brass telescope was mounted on its three legs, pointing through the open tower window in the direction of the moon. Larry Talbot was sitting in a shabby armchair that oozed stuffing, his eye glued to the eyepiece. Franz was sitting beside him with a chart of the moon in his hand. Talbot, he said nervously, don't let the telescope go now and try to breathe slowly. The evening wind was chilly and the chart rustled in the draft. Despite the cold, despite the cold, sweat was pouring off Talbot's forehead. I must just take off my tie, he said in a hoarse, worried voice. Franz glanced over his shoulder. His retreat was covered, the door to the room ajar. He swallowed dryly and tried to make his voice as steady as possible. Talbot, now look quite calmly at the moon. The moon is a planet, a satellite of the Earth. You must take this scientifically now. If you compare it with the chart here, you'll see those dark patches on the surface of the moon called seas. There is, for instance, the Sea of Serenity, he pointed to the chart, and just beside it is the Sea of Tranquility, or Mare Tranquility, Mare Tranquilitatis, it's called in Latin. Talbot cleared his throat as a growl kept trying to get out. Franz heard it and discreetly shifted one foot nearer to the exit. The Sea of Tranquility, Talbot, he said encouragingly, in the belief that the words themselves might have a calming effect. Say it after me. Now, Talbot, the Sea of Serenity, the Sea of Tranquility, Talbot repeated hoarsely. The Sea of Clarity. The sea of tranquility, tranquilitatis. His voice grew more and more inhuman, and he could not keep back the growls. Now look there, that's the sea of danger, he said with sudden wildness in his voice. Oh, and look there, that's the sea of danger, he said with a sudden wildness in his voice. Sea of danger! It was no longer a human being speaking. Franz had hitherto been mostly looking at the moon and the chart. When he shifted his gaze to the telescope, he saw around the brass tube a pair of hands that had not been there a moment ago. Their contours were a trifle blurred, apparently changing shape, the nails growing longer and more crooked, and gray hair is beginning to sprout on the backs of the hands. Talbot, he said, pull yourself together, Talbot. It's only superstition. The moon is a planet with a density of... 0 0.61, but Talbot's face showed that he was no longer susceptible to scientific experiments. His face was changing shape, his mouth and eyes twitching, his beard beginning to grow, gray hairs appearing everywhere on his forehead and cheeks, his nose lengthening and turning black at the end, his lower jaw protruding and out of the dribbling lower lip came predatory teeth like terrifying white blades. Franz was already on his way out the door. When he had slammed it shut and locked it behind him, he heard the werewolf crash against the door with a primeval snarl. He had escaped at the very last moment with only a scratch. He turned around, his knees shaking, and thumped angrily on the door. Talbot, he shouted. Can't you hear what I say? It's all nothing but superstition. And that's the end of that chapter.